The Short Sterling was the first four-engine heavy bomber to be introduced into service with the Royal Air Force, RAF, during World War II. Its development was a response to the British Air Ministry's specification B-1236, which sought a heavy bomber that could carry a large payload over long distances. The Sterling was meant to be a key component of the RAF's Bomber Command, forming the backbone of its strategic bombing campaign. Manufactured by Short Brothers, the Sterling had a distinct design with a high wing and a retractable undercarriage. It was powered by four Bristol Hercules engines. However, one significant design limitation was its wingspan, which was restricted to 100 feet to fit within existing hangars. This hampered its operational ceiling and bomb load compared to later bombers. The Sterling has the distinction of being the only British bomber of the period to see service that had been designed from the start with four engines. The Avro Lancaster was a re-engined stretched wingspan Avro Manchester, while the Halifax was planned to be powered by twin Rolls-Royce Vulture engines, but was similarly redesigned to use an arrangement of four Merlin engines in 1937. In terms of performance, the Sterling could achieve a top speed of around 255 miles per hour and had a maximum range of approximately 2,330 miles when carrying a reduced bomb load. Its relatively low operational ceiling of around 17,000 feet, however, made it more vulnerable to anti-aircraft fire and enemy fighters compared to other heavy bombers. Its crew consisted of a pair of pilots who were supported by a navigator who doubled as the bomb aimer, a front gunner who doubled as the wireless operator, two further gunners and a flight engineer. The Sterling was equipped to carry a variety of bombs in its bomb bay. The initial bomb load was around 14,000 pounds, but this was somewhat less than what was initially expected due to the limitations imposed by its design. For defensive purposes, the Sterling was equipped with multiple gun turrets, including a nose turret, tail turret, and dorsal turret. It also had started service with a single retractable ventral dustbin turret located just behind the bomb bay. This proved almost useless due to cramped conditions, with the added distraction that the turret tended to drop and hit the ground when taxiing over bumps. This retractable turret was removed almost from the start. By the end of 1941, more than 150 Sterlings had been completed and three RAF squadrons had been equipped with it. Sterlings flew on day and night bombing operations and had been found to be most capable of standing up to enemy interceptor aircraft by using a sweeping combination of fighters and bombers, a tactic which became known as the Circus Offensive. From late 1941, the Sterling played a pioneering role in the formation of the RAF's Pathfinder squadrons, specialist navigation and target finding squadrons to assist main force squadrons. From the spring of 1942, the number of Sterlings in service began to increase. From May 1943, raids on Germany were often conducted using over a hundred Sterling bombers at a time. Sterlings flew a total of 14,500 sorties, during which 27,000 tons of bombs were dropped. 582 aircraft were lost in action, while a further 119 were written off. While pilots praised the type for its ability to outturn enemy night fighters and its favorable handling characteristics, its limitations, particularly the relatively low operational ceiling, became apparent as the war progressed. As a result, the Sterling was gradually replaced in the bomber role by the Avro Lancaster and Handley Page Halifax, which could carry larger bomb loads over greater distances and at higher altitudes. By December 1943, Sterlings were withdrawn from frontline service as bombers. Despite this, the Sterling found a new lease of life in different roles. It was used extensively as a glider tug, particularly during the D-Day landings and Operation Market Garden. It also served as a transport aircraft for paratroopers and supplies, electronic countermeasures, and for dropping sea mines around German ports, a process termed gardening. By the end of the war, the Short Sterling had proved to be a valuable and versatile, albeit somewhat limited, asset to the RAF. It had played a significant role in the early stages of the strategic bombing campaign and continued to be an essential aircraft for transport and glider towing operations.